Everyone is familiar with this problem. If you spend a tiny amount of money, you end up with something that's really bad. But if you go and you spend the most money that you can for the same type of thing, well, then you're just getting ripped off. It's rooftop tent season, and this is a Galaxy 2.0 rooftop tent from Top Oak. About a year ago, Top Oak was a very new rooftop tent company, and they kind of splashed on the scene with this Galaxy 1.0 tent. It was a clamshell tent that had the pop-out design. And really, the only other competitor that was making that at that time was RoofNest, and they were charging around $4,000 for their tent. And Top Oak showed up with the same or a very similar tent for around 1600 bucks. Now, I was skeptical. I'm always skeptical when something is, I'm not gonna say super cheap, because super cheap tents are really down to 900 bucks nowadays. But it was, it was right in that range where I was still a little worried. Um, I was able to get my hands on one of these tents really early, and then that's when I was really surprised because the quality was really good. Well, here we are less than a year later, and Top Oak is giving us the Galaxy 2.0. Now, this is a tent that's very similar. It's a clamshell with the pop-out, just like the 1.0, except for they've taken some customer feedback and they're giving us some finer finishes and some finer details and features on the tent. We were able to get our hands on a prototype of this tent over a month ago. So we've been able to go through and figure out everything that's changed on the outside of the tent and on the inside of the tent. So we'll go through all of those details. And then we'll also take you on a trail where we took it on a shakedown and we can talk about some of the things that we learned on that shakedown test. All right, we're pulling into Jump Creek. This is a place I go quite often uh, just for shakedown. So throw a new tent on, I uh, can come up here. You can go up above the rim of the canyon, um, above where everybody hikes out to the waterfall. And there's a good spot out there or um, going over a little bit of basic rocks and rock crawling, some really bumpy stuff. Anytime you're putting new equipment on your vehicle, you should definitely get out and uh, do a shakedown on it. Make sure all those bolts won't rattle loose and everything like that. So this is the Galaxy 2.0 rooftop tent. It is a clamshell tent. It is the kind that has the additional pop-out that gives you much more room inside. And it is made by a company called Top Oak. Top Oak sent me a Galaxy 1.0, the predecessor of this one, less than a year ago, right when they first came out with it. And they sent it to me for product testing and for feedback. And I did give them a bunch of feedback on it. It was a fantastic tent. I, I ended up doing a video on it. And the reason that I did is it was the best value tent out there. Everybody keeps spending $4,000 plus on rooftop tents. And I don't think you need to do that anymore. In fact, this video is going to make a whole bunch of rooftop tent manufacturers very mad. But these tents are going for between $1,500 and $1,600. Frankly, I have tested them. The Galaxy 1.0, I have two of those that we have had on Jeeps, not my Jeeps, but we've had two of them running on friends' Jeeps for over a year. They're still solid. We haven't had any problems. Nothing is broken. The, you know, the paint isn't fading. It's, they are very, very good tents for 1500 bucks. They, they, a year ago on the market, it was really only them and RoofNest that had this secondary pop-out section that gave you a bunch more space inside. Since then, a bunch of other companies have copied it, um, so there's more on the market. But again, I'm not finding any of them in this price range of fifteen to sixteen hundred dollars. The cheapest ones I keep finding are. 2,000, like 2,500 plus, all the way to 4,000 bucks. I know people want to do research. They don't, they've never heard of Top Oak. They're not sure if it's a reputable company. I've had to handle insurance claims because one of the tents that they did ship us got damaged by the shipper. It wasn't defective. It literally got smashed by a forklift. All right, so this is the top of the box. This is how it showed up. These deep cuts here is where the damage actually made it into the actual tent. All right, so those holes on the cardboard correspond with this one. And then this one's just a good dent. We took photos of it, 
sent it off to them. They had another tent to us like in less than 10 days. The tech support was super awesome to work with. A bunch of my friends, because of how good of a deal this tent is, have also bought this tent. So I know over 10 people that are running this tent and we haven't had any problems. But all of that to say, that was the Galaxy 1.0, like I said, that I covered in this video. This is the 2.0. So they actually took all the feedback that I sent them on the Galaxy 1.0 and they incorporated a lot of it. Uh, we'll, I actually have a list of every single change on this tent and it's a pretty long list of improvements that they made. One of the biggest things you need to worry about with rooftop tents is condensation. Because the more moisture you trap in there every time you put it away, the more it molds inside of there and smells bad. So I told them, you know, their tent was missing a key piece. It was missing these condensation vents on the roof that allow moisture to go out, but rain and snow not to go in. They went ahead and added condensation vents on both sides of the tent. Um, they already came standard with a condensation mat and a mattress with a washable layer on it. So they have a lot of stuff to help handle condensation. Same thing, you know, the top of the roof, they have a quilted fabric on it. So your condensation doesn't cling to the roof. It gives it a chance to actually evaporate out and, and vent rather than sticking to a cold surface. I think it's lighter. It's either very, very similar or lighter. It definitely didn't get much heavier. I had another tent sitting right behind us here uh, that got sent to me and it that one does, it's over 220 pounds and it's smaller than this clamshell tent and somehow weighs more than what, 60? Yeah, more than 60 pounds more. And when I told them, when I gave them feedback and I said, I can't really give this tent a good review, it's just simply too heavy for the size and, and what it offers, they told me that it had to be that heavy to be able to close your sleeping bags and store your sleeping bags inside of it. And it's just not true. One cool thing that you'll notice is my sleeping bag is in here. Here's my pillow and there's my sleeping bag and that's actually a two person sleeping bag. Uh, one trick with your sleeping bags in the tent, you need to store them up towards the front of the tent because the bulk of all this fabric, when it folds down, is, is towards the back, or I'll call this the back entrance of the tent or the back of your vehicle. So yeah, store, store your pillows and uh, any bedding up towards the front gives you plenty of room to store it in here. This is a ladder, uh, no, that's a ladder bag. So you can put your ladder away without getting your mattress dirty. This is a shoe bag that hangs outside um, in case your shoes are a total mess. All right, so we're gonna continue through the list of everything that they changed on this tent. One of the first big changes that you're gonna notice is they gave us integrated railings on the side here, on the top of it, for actually installing solar panels on here. You still have these crossbars that you can mount on the side and go over the top so you're, you're able to mount a solar panel to this integrated rail flat against the top and then have your rack for like storing a kayak or a whatever, a surfboard or anything like that stored on top of this. So this was just kind of a cool feature to be able to have much easier way to mount solar panels. Um, on top of that, all of the hardware got upgraded. So the little screws that they're using, they, they went with a European standard and, and it's a stainless, um, hardware now. So these are much better value, like much more expensive hardware that, that has a lot more durability. They also added lock washers that are very hard to see, but if you look back in those cracks, they have lock washers. Now, one thing to know, the hardware in a tent, uh, this stuff would rattle loose before. Like you always generally need to check your hardware every time you go on a big, long, bumpy road and, and check your, your bolts. Now, one thing that I will tell you is after, you know, one reason you don't want to lock tight these is, let's say you want to put an awning on here. You might have to take this off to slide your mounts for your awning farther down and then put this back on. So once you have all of your stuff mounted and you know exactly where it's going to be and where it's going to stay for a long time, it's not a bad idea to lock tight these bolts and have them stay in there permanently so you don't lose some of them. But until you lock tight them, it's awfully nice that they have lock washers on the back of all of these now, so they will last longer and um, won't 
rattle as loose as easy. Okay, this is a super interesting thing. Previously, the corner right here, this is all aluminum and this is aluminum. So it was an aluminum framed tent, but these corners used to be plastic. And what they've done now is they've changed it out to where it's not uh, plastic and it's aluminum all the way around. Uh, and they've done that to try to strengthen the durability. So the end caps are no longer plastic. Now, just like I said, I still own the, the Galaxy 1.0s. We have those, those have been on trucks for over a year now, and none of the plastic corners have been problematic, but they went ahead and made them stronger anyway. So they're just strengthening some stuff, even though we don't necessarily have to have it strengthened because it seems to be holding up just fine. They're improving it anyway. One thing they've done, and really this is 100% just a matter of personal preference, is they swapped uh, these. So the latches for when you're opening and closing the tent, um, they have them facing down this way now. They used to face the other way. So one thing I kind of like about this, it sticks out a little bit, and I guess you could hit your head on it or something, but it actually gives you a good spot to hang stuff off the back of the tent, like your boot bag and things like that. So I don't mind it sticking out the way that it does, but I feel like some people are gonna say they don't like that it sticks out now. They'd much rather just have it, you know, be up here on the top of the tent out of the way. And if you want to do that, then you can just switch them yourself. It works either way. I feel like the way that they have it now though, with them, I guess you could say upside down. If you're a short person and you're trying to open your tent, I do think it makes it easier to open your tent that way. Okay, so one other thing that got called out on the last tent was they have the doors to where on the outside is the screen and then on the inside is the door. Some people for some reason were like, that's backwards, that's not how it's supposed to be. And I actually don't agree with them because if you're inside your tent and you want to have daylight, you can open up your door and you still have a screen. I don't like where you have to open up your screen, then open up the door and let the mosquitoes in to then close the screen. So I actually think that they have this correct. One other thing that they didn't change that I saw some people commenting on is some people commented on how much they hate having the doors zip down. They want them to zip up to where they can roll them up out of the way. So when you're climbing in and out of the tent, you aren't climbing over top of your doors. Again, this is one of those things it's like, in theory, it sounds good, but it's a little short-sighted because when you camp in really bad rain. Well, when we said we were gonna test the tent, I don't know if we thought this was gonna happen. But uh, honestly, it doesn't flap around at all. It's not making any noise. Waterproofing seems to work great. You want the rain to hit your door. And when it's rolling down your door, a lot of times on the bottom of these tents, you have the potential for water to collect right here. You don't want water collecting where you have all your zippers. You want water collecting where it is a solid piece of fabric with taped seams and keeps the water out. So this again, some people won't see it this way, but having the doors on the bottom where you gotta climb over them to get in and out, that's the correct way if you're gonna camp in inclement weather. Okay, let's talk some of the changes on the interior. So yeah, the biggest change on the interior is this blackout coating. It used to be that the same gray on the outside was on the inside and it let a lot more light through. They've coated it with this lining on the inside now that keeps uh, the light out and makes it very dark in here. The moonroof is huge. It is more than double the size of the last one. We have better pouches. So they went ahead and added in, they've got shoe pouches here, so you can put a shoe and a shoe on each side. So this side and this other side over here. Um, they have pouches there as well and there so felt like phone pouches and there's two on each side so there's you know his and hers or uh pouches on both sides for everything then you also have the, the thing up on top for stuffing your clothes behind because it's got the elastic that goes out and then several more pouches so you've got a lot of room there you've got a light bar up on top uh, so you have an integrated light that of course 
uses a USB cable, so you gotta plug it into, you know, some kind of charging brick for that to be on. Um, these, the new little black patches up there, that is the vents that vent the condensation outside. Just one more way for a condensation to escape so it doesn't all collect inside of here and get moldy. Uh, these clips that hold up uh, uh, the tent, they used to have Velcro right here and that would Velcro it in, which was a little bit harder to like reach and undo when you're trying to pull this down. Now they just have an integrated uh, plastic clip that it clips into. So it makes it way easier to pull them out and swing them out and lock them in place. They also greatly improved the clip that's on the end here. Um, it used to be a little hard to get that to clip in the first couple times that you used it. And whatever plastic or material that they changed it to now, it works much better. Um, also, they improved this rail. So this is the bar that holds up your pop-out section of the tent and gives you all that extra room inside the tent. So think of it this way, when you're looking at it from the side, most clamshells would stop right here and they would just have a straight line to there. This pop-out is supported by a metal hoop that goes right here and then it has those, those bars that we were talking about right here uh, that support it. And it has one on each side, which is amazing. A lot of tents only put one in the middle and then all your fabric on the side over here is super flappy. So if you're in a windstorm, your tent makes a ton of noise. So they, they have one on each side, which is awesome. Uh, you really only need one to actually support the tent if it's not windy, um, but you can do both to keep it nice and tight and less wind noise. Um, but the new bar that they have in here, the last one you could kind of pull out right here and then lay it flat on the bed. Now they've made it quicker. It's integrated, it's on a hinge, it doesn't pull out. So, and they have the mattress is a slightly different shape to allow for this thing to fold down flat onto the mattress. So when you come in here and you open the tent, all you have to do is grab the bar, swing it up, and your tent is pitched. Uh, and just essentially secure in one of those pulls. The amazing thing about these tents is how fast they are to set up. It has the little lock. You can use the key or you can just use your finger to push it down. It's not really about safety. It's about the thing not coming unlatched while you're driving. After you pop both the locks, these clamshells with the struts, they just pop right up. You got an elastic band that helps you tuck stuff in the side, make the tent easier to open. Then, you have an aluminum pole. You pull out, and that's your pop-up right there. With this type of car, I've learned it's best to put the ladder on the side so you still have access to the back of your vehicle really easy. So there's the ladder, and then, We'll talk about it in more detail, but this tent, one of the features that they added are these pop-outs. And they make it to where when you're getting in and out in a rainstorm, you're able to stand up on the ladder for a minute, kind of get yourself sorted without the water dumping down on your face. That was actually, um, I camped in the, the Galaxy 1.0 in a major rainstorm and uh, when you were climbing in through the backpack here, a lot of water would come off the top and land on you, so. But that's basically, the tent is set up. I'll probably tighten down the top rain slick and I need to put up the, the one bar on the inside that holds everything tight so it doesn't flap. Yeah, so some of the changes that they've made to the bars in here was recommendations that we actually sent to them after testing other tents. We tested the Roof Nest Falcon and it was one of the few edges that the Falcon had is we told them, you know, the system that they have for deploying this bar to support the wedge um, pop out is, is better than yours. They didn't copy them exactly. They actually engineered it a little bit differently and it, it works fantastic. Um, like I said, the Falcon only has one bar to support it. They still kept the two, um, which definitely, like I said, if you're camping in a storm makes a huge difference. So I, I'm, 
I'm really kind of blown away so far by like how much of the feedback they incorporated from, you know, that we sent them, we sent them this feedback less than a year ago and they already have come back with the new model. Um, let's see, here's, I'm looking at my notes. What am I missing? Ah, there is hangers, little hangers all around the roof on the top now for like clipping in your own lights if you have string lights or something like that or you need to secure a little lamp to the ceiling. So they got a bunch of those in there for you, which is really nice. Um, the fabric and the stitching and the finishes, they, they just keep getting better. Like they got rid of the, yellow, uh, the orange striping that a bunch of brands that are just all using the exact same factory all have that same orange. They went ahead and got rid of that and just made it this cool black and gray. Um, I think it looks a lot cleaner. It looks a lot tighter. Um, and then of course, adding in that lining on the inside of the fabric definitely adds that touch of like, it has that level, like when you have a roof nest that's over $4,000 and you get inside of it, it's like the finishes are good, but you can just tell. Um, and I do think with this one, they've amped the finishes up as well. Okay, obviously one of the biggest changes are these pop-outs on the side. So normally they used to just have the door here. Um, they added the vent above it, so the door's a little bit smaller, and then they added these pop-outs. You don't have to use these. You can just leave these, they roll up and stick to the side out of the way. But the deal is, depending on your car, you can set your ladder up to get in on the left or the right, or you can set it up to get in the rear. If you have the ladder for the rear, if it's raining, um, it's kind of stinks because this the rain can flow down here. It usually can kind of come off the side, but a lot of it will just drip on your head. So if you're ever going to camp in bad weather, setting up your ladder on one of the sides and setting up this makes a big difference. It makes it to where you can kind of climb to the top of the ladder, unzip stuff without having all of the water and moisture on the tent like raining down on you. We tested the Galaxy 1.0 on that other video uh, like a year ago and we got stuck in a crazy rainstorm. It was coming down so hard. And that was one of the main things I remember was when I had to get into the tent when it was raining, I did get soaked from a little waterfall coming off here. So I think these are pretty cool. Me personally, I don't actually, I, I'm all about fast setup and fast teardown. So I don't even actually ever set these up unless I'm in bad weather. And if, if I'm expecting weather, then you set this up because this is this will be an awesome feature for getting in and out of the tent when it's wet. Okay, so now the important stuff. Uh, this tent, the Galaxy 2.0, the reason you haven't heard of it is it goes on sale today. Today is the actual release date. This, in fact, is a prototype they sent me ahead of time before they even had their big shipment come in. So they have about 60 of these tents down in LA, already in the US, already cleared through customs, ready to ship. Um, they have, they're selling these for $14.99 plus $2.99 shipping. Uh, they gave us a coupon code for people that watch our channel that's just outdoor, all capitalized, and that saves you 10%. So if you do the math on that, it roughly works out to about a $1,600 tent. I think it's like 16 and change, 1610 or something like that. Uh, so this tent is only about $100 more than the Galaxy 1.0. The Galaxy 1.0 is still continuing to be made right now. Um, they'll continue to make stuff for that for a while because obviously they want to support the warranties of the previous tent. Um, but yeah, so they have the 2.0. This is the first shipment of it. I am pretty certain that it's going to sell out in like two days would be my guess. Um, and after that, it'll be a while for them to get these back in stock. You got to understand with the way manufacturing works, they ha they'll have like a whole entire like line of equipment and machines that's cutting parts for a specific tent. So it will cut a certain amount of parts and it will do a whole entire run of that tent. Then they have to go reset up that whole entire line for a different model tent that they make. And then they make a bunch of those. And they try to make a big enough chunk of them to send them to where they can stay in stock for a while while they switch the equipment out and make other tents. So Top Oak right now is making the Galaxy 1.0 wedge. Now they're making the 2.0 and rumor has it unofficially that there's at least two more tents they're planning on uh, bringing to market. So in a tent like this, where they just ran through 60 of them and stuck them in a warehouse for you guys, 
after those are sold out, I would imagine they'll be sold out for, I don't know, a month while that assembly line is working on some other tent. So if you want one, I would get one fast. If you don't care and you're aiming to have one by like early fall or late summer, you're probably gonna be able to buy in on the second or third runs that they put out there. But the bottom line is at 1600 bucks, this thing's still half the cost of its competitors. And now it's not even like that little ticky tacky stuff with the 1.0 when we were comparing it to the roof nest, we had them in the same building right here in the shop next to each other side by side. There's definitely things where you could go, you know, like the finishes just look a tiny bit shinier on the roof nest. Well, this one now, it has everything. It's, it's good. It's not just good, it's better. It even has more features. It has your solar panel stuff built in now for, for mounting solar panels. It has these pop-outs for bad weather. It has the more secure way to hold the tent popped out, again, for bad weather. It's got an awesome, huge skylight. It, it has all the features now. So now it's just not even, there's just not a comparison. Like, the Roof Nest is a great tent. I'm not saying anything bad about the Roof Nest. It just costs more than twice as much. So this is the new best deal in rooftop tents if this is the type of tent that you need. Got to remember, this is a clamshell. If you have a Tacoma or something like that, these, these are long. If you're going to mount it in the back, it's either going to hang a little bit off of the bed or you're going to be on a taller rack and it's going to hang a little bit over the roof. So if a clamshell is the right type of tent for you, save the money and go on vacation. Don't buy a $4,000 tent. Buy a $1,600 tent and use that money to go on a cool adventure.